Data centers in space. That's the most recent technology to excite Silicon Valley. Jeff Bezos believes that we'll have data centers in orbit in 10 years or so. Eric Schmidt, former CEO of Google, recently confirmed he bought a rocket company to help launch computing infrastructure into orbit. And Elon Musk thinks that within four to five years, the least expensive way to do AI computing is with solar-powered satellites in orbit. Let's have a look. I think even perhaps in the four or five year time frame, the lowest cost way to do AI compute will be with solar powered AI satellites. So I'd say not more than five years from now. Wow. Putting data centers into orbit sounds like a good idea. For one thing, there's lots of sunlight up there, so you get power for free. You just need to put the satellites in what's called a sun-synchronous orbit that stays in the sun almost the entire year. This is, I think, why Elon Musk is so enthusiastic about it. Another advantage is that you don't have to find land to build on. No one's around to complain about the noise. And if you're up there already, you can beam down data across the globe. Best of all, space is cold, very cold, so you don't have to worry about cooling. But there are downsides too. Most obviously, you have to get the material up into space, and that's neither cheap nor easy. If something goes wrong, you can't go and fix it, and the cooling isn't as simple as it sounds. This is because on Earth, the easiest way to cool a processor is to blow air across it to transport off the heat. You can't do this in outer space. More generally, there are three types of cooling. Conduction, convection and radiation. Conduction means heat moves through solid materials, for example, from a chip to a metal plate. Convection means the heat is carried by moving fluids or gases, and radiative cooling means the heat is emitted as infrared light. In space, convection doesn't work because there's no air. And the problem with radiative cooling is that it needs a large surface area to work efficiently. So the plans for space-based data centers are either to use convection to transport the heat through metal to a big panel, the radiator, that gives the heat off into space, or to circulate some sort of fluid, ammonia or some sort of refrigerant, to transport the heat and then again radiate it off into space. That's doable, but basically Basically, that space is cold isn't as much of an advantage as you may think. The second issue is cosmic radiation and solar wind. Both will rain highly energetic particles down on the data centers. This can both permanently damage microchips and it can lead to errors during data processing. To deal with that, for one thing, you want the satellites to be in low Earth orbit, like Elon Musk's Starlink satellites, because there isn't quite as much radiation there. But also, the computers need shielding and some use radiation-hardened chips. These have a thicker insulation and larger transistors that makes them more sturdy but also slower, like me but without the German accent. Then there is the question of what space computing even makes sense for. If you have data collected by satellites that you want to process up there before sending it down to Earth, that makes a lot of sense because the satellite Earth link has a low bandwidth compared to what we can do on the ground. Information processing in a data center on Earth can now be done at a speed of more than a terabit per second. The best satellite to Earth links are currently in the range of one gigabit per second, that's a factor 1000 slower. So yeah, processing data up there makes a lot of sense. For the same reason, however, it doesn't make sense to do anything up there which requires a lot of data from the ground. Like if you were thinking of doing AI training up there, that won't work unless we see a massive upgrade in the satellite to Earth bandwidth. That said, there are a bunch of startups and governmental projects working on space-based computing already. In the US, a startup called StarCloud recently launched a satellite with an NVIDIA H100 chip on board. That's one of the fastest AI chips currently available. The StarCloud CEO, Philip Johnston, said in 10 years, nearly all new data centers will be built in outer space. The company Axiom Space is working on orbital data 
data notes focused on government use, likely including secure data handling and defense applications. But the most ambitious project so far comes from Google, which just announced Project Suncatcher, which aims to build a space-based AI cluster. They plan to link dozens of satellites with ultra-high-speed laser links, potentially reaching 10 terabits per second. They want to launch two prototype satellites by early 2027. And by 2030, when you wonder, where did I put this file? Maybe the answer is somewhere above Madagascar. Science is beautiful, let me show you. This is a star map of the night sky of last year's solar eclipse, which I watched in Canada. It's a lovely way to remember that event. And with Christmas coming up, maybe you can think of someone who would like a star map too? This star map comes from a company called Underlucky Stars, who've been sponsoring this video. The poster comes with the frame and the cover, and here you see it hanging on the wall. It really makes for a great wall decoration with this extra nerdy touch. And it's not like they just guess the positions of the stars. They calculate them and have them verified for accuracy by a NASA astronomer. You can choose the design for the poster from a variety of styles and also add your own text to it. And it looks in reality how it looks on their website. These posters are great memories of special moments and gifts, not just for science lovers. So if you're looking for Christmas gifts or maybe a gift to yourself, go and check out their website underluckystars.com and get your own personal star map. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.